If you're looking to run Ubuntu on VirtualBox, we'll show you the steps to get it going. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up our browser uh, and in Google, we'll go type in Ubuntu and we'll go to the official Ubuntu website, which is ubuntu.com. Click on the download link in the top right hand corner. And the newest version is going to be version 20.04. We'll click on the download link and allow it to download. Depending on your connection, it might take a bit of time. This is over two gigs in size. Uh, this is an ISO image that we're downloading and we need the ISO image to install within VirtualBox. Once the ISO is completed, we'll be opening up VirtualBox. Now we're going under the assumption that you have VirtualBox already installed. If you don't have it installed, you can click on here and you can check out the link in the description as well for the video on how to install it. So we open up VirtualBox, we click on machine, then new. And in here, we have to give it a name. So we'll type in Ubuntu and we'll put in the version 20.04, okay? It auto fills the correct operating system. In here, you can see all the options for Solaris, Windows, Mac OS, and the different distributions for Linux. Uh, since it's already selected the correct one, we can click on next. Inside memory size, we're gonna wanna max it out. We're gonna go right to the end of the green, give it as much available memory as we can. I'm not using a crazy computer here, so this is uh, gonna be what we're using. Then we'll click on next. In hard disk, we're, we're gonna leave the default setting as create virtual disk. And for the hard disk file type, we're going to leave VDI, which is virtual disk image, and we'll click on next. And for storage on physical disk, we're gonna leave this as dynamic. Again, this is a default setting, and we're gonna click on next. For file location and size, we're gonna leave it in the default location. We have no reason to change this as well. Uh, unless you have your own reasons, you can change the location. We'll leave the size as is, 10 gigabytes. Then we're gonna click on create. So here we go. So now we've finished that part and we've come back to the main image window. We're not going to start this right away. We're gonna do make some modifications and by doing so, we're gonna be clicking on settings. And in general, you'll see that we have the name that we've already selected for it, Ubuntu 20.04 and the correct operating system and version type is here, 64-bit. So now we'll click on the advanced tab and in here, we want to make sure that shared clipboard and drag and drop categories, we want to make sure that bi-directional for both is selected. By selecting bi-directional, we're allowing the virtual image and your current PC, which in this case is Windows 10, to share files and drag and drop and allow it to copy and paste text back and forth, which will be very useful later on when we want to do the guest additions. Under description, we're leaving that the way it is. Under encryption will be nothing. We're gonna leave that the way it is. Under the system, where you have, as you can see, memory maxed to the end of the green. All the optical drives are selected. Here we have processor. We can select more if you'd like. We're going to max that out again. And in this case, we're going to provide four of the eight CPUs available. Display, we're going to leave that as default. In storage, you'll see that the controller is empty. Uh, so no image has been selected. What we're going to want to do is select under optical disk. We're going to select and choose a disk location. In here, we're going to select our download folder, and here you can see the 
Ubuntu ISO image. So we'll click on it and then hit open. And you can see that it's populated here now. So now that we have the image selected, we can go ahead and start configuring it. All the remaining options below on the left hand side will remain as default. We have no reason to change these unless you do. We're going to be keeping it as default for this purpose. And in here we can see the recap of all our settings that we have changed and configured and the ones that we have left as is. So now we can begin by clicking on start. You'll get a few prompts here about the startup disk. We can click on start. And the installation will now begin. It's going to load up the Ubuntu installation as it would as if you had the CD in a PC. So we won't waste your time and we'll speed this part up. And we're almost done. Okay, so we have the welcome window for the installation. And what we're going to do is, for our purpose, we're going to be selecting English. Now we have the option to try Ubuntu or install it. We are going to install it. I'm going to click on that. Here we're going to be using our default English keyboard, US English. And we'll leave that as is and we'll click on continue. Next up, what apps would you like to install to start with? We're going to be selecting normal installation, which is default, other options, download updates while installing Ubuntu. We want that. And we're going to select install third party software for graphics and Wi Fi hardware and additional media formats. So it's going to gather all the additional software we may need during this installation. And we can click on continue. Now the, for this installation type, it says erase disk and install Ubuntu. Nothing is actually going to be erased on your computer. This is just for the virtual disk they are speaking about. So there will be no changes here and we can click on install now. We're going to get a message here about partitions uh, that are going to be formatted. We can click on continue. It'll ask for the time zone that you're in. For this demonstration, we're going to use our default New York time here. We'll leave it selected and then click on continue. And now they want a little bit of information. So we're going to provide a, we're going to provide a name, a computer name and a username. Geekwar we'll put in here. Computer name, we can remove the virtual box just to keep it consistent. And then a password. We recommend to always using an alphanumeric password just to keep things safe. Once you have that entered, keep the required my password to log in and click on continue. So that's the majority of the configuration part. Now it's going to want to copy, unpack and install files. This will take a while depending on your computer. We're going to speed this up so we're not wasting your time. And once it's completely done installing everything, you'll be prompted to remove media. And this is under the assumption that you're installing it uh, with a USB or CD. We have nothing to remove. So we're going to click on enter and it will reboot and continue the installation. This will take a little bit of time. Again, we're going to speed it up for you. So now that the installation part has been completed, we're going to be asked to log in 
And here is where you're going to use that password we used during the installation phase. And we'll type it in here and then hit the enter on your keyboard. And it'll begin the login. And the last few little steps to finish the cleaning installation, uh, you can use your online accounts if you have uh, drive access, online cloud access that you want to use. Uh, we're not going to, we're just going to click on skip. And live patching, click on next. And to help improve, uh, this gives Ubuntu some critical information if there's problems, click on next. And now it's just going to finish installing the software and we're done. So that wraps up the installation for Ubuntu on VirtualBox. And as you can see, everything that you would normally get with the operating system is loaded up here. Uh, as you try to resize, you're gonna notice that the screen is not changing. It's gonna keep it at one consistent size all the way through, even if you try to full screen it. What you'll need to do is install the guest additions, which will be in our next video and we'll update the description below with a link to that. Uh, and we're done. So that is how to install Ubuntu on a virtual box. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. We'll have more tutorials on how to go deeper into VirtualBox. Thank you for watching.